I made the promise to them, that promise has transcended into so many other people making the same promise. We have individuals who are committed, we have churches that are committed, and what we are doing now today is getting it to the world. That you can sit in your household, you can sit in your church today and make that promise. As we said before, that's the promise that keeps these children going. They are resilience. Everyone, when we birth a child, we make that promise to them, I'll take care of you no matter what. Nyaka students are no different from your child who smiles every day, who you kiss on the cheek and say good night. You can make that promise too and change someone's life. And I know because I trust in God, you will do it and we'll do it together. I went to the benefit dinner last year, it was the second annual dinner, and he challenged anyone there, if you wanted to, any of the students there, if you want a real internship, go to Nyaka, and I took him up on that. Certainly glad I did, but you weren't kidding, it was a real, it was a real trip. <laughs> um, I'm, I, again, it's the best experience of my life though, and I'm going to talk about that right now. Um, first of all, when we're talking about we're talking about Africa, and especially AIDS orphans. It's good to get a broader view of what's going on in Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole, which is by far the most afflicted part of the world um, with regards to AIDS. OK, here are just some quick facts on AIDS in Sub-Saharan Africa. As you can see, um, the top one's perhaps the most compelling of all of them. 64% of all HIV, HIV cases worldwide are in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, as you can see, the number is staggering. 24.5 million people infected. Some countries like South Africa still maintain a 25% prevalence rate. Uganda is admired for the way it has handled the AIDS problem. Um, again, it's, it's um, promoted abstinence programs, um, safe sex programs, all the above, and it's done a great job educating its populace. But as you can see below, there's still 1.7 million AIDS orphans living in Uganda today. These children in Anyaka school are all double orphans, no mother, no father. Where do they draw the courage to keep living? When someone has lost both parents at a tender age, it's already difficult for us adult people to lose somebody. One way of reassuring them at Nyaka, the method we have used, is tell them not just we people who are doing these things are just doing them, but they also have the God who watches over them. The singing has even some secret about it. We call it at Nyaka singing away HIV and AIDS. Most of them sing by telling their testimonies. They are telling the story of how their parents died. They are telling the story of what they have gone through. It has worked as a therapeutic for them to sit down and say, I've talked about it, I've shared it, I now know I can move on. It's difficult, they are still having nightmares at night. They are still, as we shave their heads, tell you my mom, my dad used to do this. It's still difficult, but one thing they get at Nyaka is love. They know we love them, they know we care about them. We've shown them pictures of our supporters. We've shown pictures of churches collecting offerings for them. One thing they always tell me, most smiles they get is when they get those letters and know someone cares and loves them. Three years ago, we began this process, a process to save lives. The measure of a human being is not what he accumulates for himself or for herself, but what he gives away, what she gives away. We're changing the world one child at a time. There is no room for failure. We will not say no. We will redouble our effort. We will strengthen our arms. We will lift up those who are hurting. We will dust off those who have fallen down. We will not fail. We will turn this world upside down and we'll make it better. And we'll do it one child at a time, one village at a time, one country at a time, and we'll begin with our own community as well. We will change the world. We will not fail.
growing up there, we heard what do colors mean. And they told me purple means happiness. And they said for them it was so important as they come to Nyaka to celebrate happiness. So they said on top of their happiness, coming to Nyaka is closing that bridge of misery into happiness. Most grandmothers have raised their children. After their children are grown and die of AIDS, now they have to come back and raise grandchildren. They are the heroes who are not praised by anybody. They are the people who are behind there wondering whether their children will grow or will not grow. Millions of grandmothers in Africa that take care of more than 14 children whose parents have died. They go to bed every day knowing some children are going to die. Their grandkids are going to die. They have no care. The education is crucial for them. The, the volunteers we get are crucial. It's so imperative that we get different professions. Everyone is welcome, and you will find something to do at Nyaka. We need doctors to come and visit so they can treat these children. We have a child, Alan, who crawls on his knees. He has some neurological disorder. We hope to bring him one day and get treatment in the United States. Whether you're a dentist, our children have never seen a dentist. We'd love to run a dentist clinic. Social workers, we don't have social services in, in uh, Uganda, in Nyaka. We'd love to have our teachers trained on how to deal with children in distress, children who have lost their parents. We'd like to have those skills. What we have, take your typical day without running water, without your camper, without um, electricity. When you want to go to the bathroom, you either go to the deep latrine. When you want to uh, go to, the, to use the toilet, you, instead of toilet paper, you use leaves, young leaves. And when you want to sleep, you don't have to go upstairs in your comfortable bedroom. Take that typical day and take away your tent too because our children don't even have that luxury. We would like to have a generator that would generate high power for school. We would like to teach our students the computer skills when they are still young so they can compete with the rest of the world. We would like to get some kind of technology to make the water clean so they can drink it right from the tap. We would like to cement and provide mosquito nets for all the children. We would like to build a library where these children can come and read a book. And I tell them, one day you're going to grow up, be resilient, work hard, you will do the same things I'm doing. You will love other children like you've been loved and continue the legacy. That's why we are all here. Because someone somewhere does not have an opportunity like we do. Providing education for these children is not just to give them education so they can get degrees, be like we are, drive good cars and live in big houses. It's providing them life. I don't know where all these emotions are coming from now. <laughs> it's providing them knowing how to read and write. Something they would never have gotten had it not been for your support.